Welcome to how to use the Sonus PD Pro. In this course, we'll cover the benefits of using the Sonus View Pro desktop software. We'll cover the operational features of the Sonus View Pro desktop, how to mark harmonic indications with the software, how to convert hertz into seconds to determine fault frequency content in a time signal domain. We'll also give you a brief introduction into sound analysis. Although decibels can be used for trending bearings, they cannot be used for trending electrical systems until enough historical information has been gathered on the assets. This is where the use of sound analysis software like the Sonus View Pro desktop is used to look for harmonic indications, which can then determine what faults are present in the asset. The use of time signal and frequency spectrum can pick out the exact harmonic and their repetitive value, both in time and in Hertz. This can help the inspector determine if there's a bad bearing, inner or outer race fault, or maybe the cage is at fault inside that motor. It can even be used to determine whether an electrical fault is corona, treeing, tracking, arcing, partial discharge, phase variant, loose windings, or delamination of windings in electrical assets. These events all have distinct fault signatures in a time signal domain. Much like an EKG, each event will have this telltale signature that will let the inspector know exactly what they're looking at and what the fault condition is. The reporting abilities of the software can help the inspector explain to management or a client what is actually happening inside instead of simply saying, I heard something out there. Signal analysis software allows the user to quickly analyze the basic and more advanced signal properties of the sound wave especially when it comes to comparing signals and looking for their distinct harmonics. This type of software is part of the development process for signal analysis-based fault detection, machine monitoring, and always when there is a need to detect statistically significant and persistent differences between signals. The accurate determination of harmonic patterns of the signals is another reason why sound analysis software is so important for helping in the determination of fault conditions. It makes all the sense in the world if one would consider the simplest way to tell two signals apart is to measure and compare them in an overlay view. May that be the frequency, amplitude, phase, or other statistical properties, they can all very accurately be evaluated and compared against other like equipment sound waves that were captured. When it comes to sound analysis software, it is possible that the analysis parameters can zap your computer or laptop's memory, causing the system to take a very long time for the computation to be completed. The computer should have at least eight gigabytes of RAM to effectively operate these types of softwares effectively. Sound analysis can tell so much more about what is occurring with assets than trending decibels alone can. For years, trending in decibels was the only way to determine when to lubricate a bearing, while electrical assets were just reported to have heard something. With the sound wave recordings and analysis software 20 years ago, companies could finally start to see what was occurring and try to determine the harmonic faults that were showing up. Sometimes though, the CBM analysts couldn't see any harmonic faults in the frequency spectrum known as an FFT, while the time signal or time waveform would show a pattern, but its values couldn't be determined due to the fact that the software would not go out to tenths of a thousandth of a second. This made the ability of sound analysis software and time signal next to impossible. Now with newer sound wave analysis software like the Sonus View Pro desktop, we can look at the fault frequency of a time signal value into the millionth of a second. This game-changing feature will allow us to look into the time signal domain and give us even more diagnostic capabilities to determine the differences between loose windings, which would present at a value of 120 Hertz or at 0.0083 to infinity seconds, versus a dirty power fault, which would present with 121 Hertz or a 0.08264462 seconds value and can range up to 122 Hertz, which would come out to a 0.00819672 seconds interval fault indication. Sonus View Pro Desktop is the first software platform that goes out beyond a tenth of a second of time 
finally allowing us to calculate fault frequency in a time signal analysis screen. This ability allows the CBM analyst to determine the difference between the existence of electrical faults, which occur outside of North America at 0.02 seconds or 50 hertz, or in North America at 0.01666666667 seconds or 60 hertz, which indicates the presence of a line frequency fault condition. If the fault shows up outside of the North Americas at 0.01, which is a 100 hertz interval, or at 0.0083 to infinity, which would indicate 120 hertz in North America, this would be an indication of the presence of a two timeline frequency event, which are indicators of either a loose connection or delamination of windings. The main purpose of all this analysis is to help keep data on how equipment is wearing out due to time or bad maintenance techniques. We can compare different brands and their lifespans against each other to see which brand may be a better suit for your needs. Be able to forecast failures with accuracy in determining how long that asset will last. Make changes in the frequency of maintenance based off of historical data. And keep records of mean time between failure. For a more hands-on experience, please try opening your Sonus View Analyzer software to follow along. To open a sound wave, simply move your cursor over the File tab. This will open a drop-down window. Then proceed to Open Uncompressed File. Locate your files in the folder. We recommend that you establish a Soundwave library for each client individually or each application that you may be testing under. Once you select a file, it will appear here in Slot 1. Your next Soundwave would open up in Slot 2, and so on. We do not recommend having more than eight sound waves on display at one time. When analyzing the sound wave, the analyst has several options to choose from when viewing the sound wave. The default value of the Sonus View Pro is the dual time signal, which will display both the left and right channels in a time signal format. The dual left and right time signal screens allow the CBM analyst to view the sound wave in a linear phase, since the linear phase is a straight line view of the sound energy. Ultrasound devices that record mono signal will show up as a nonlinear phase, and only the right time signal will show up since they have no left channel. The dual frequency spectrum gives the NOS the ability to zoom in and out on the views while leaving the other one at full length. This allows the NOS to look at the zoomed in area while still displaying the entirety of the frequency spectrum on another view below. If you choose to analyze in a time signal and frequency spectrum domain, you will notice that at the top of the screen, the entirety of the time signal will still be displayed. The middle screen will display the frequency spectrum where harmonics can be indicated and found in hertz. And in the time signal, we can see it in tens to millionths of a second as far as the harmonic spacing between harmonic occurrences. The frequency spectrum and time signal view allows the analyst to look for harmonic occurrences in both the frequency spectrum, which will be in hertz, and in the time signal, which will be in seconds. We can calculate the timing of the occurrences from hertz to seconds, which gives the analyst the ability to detect the fault condition, even if the critical angle hasn't been achieved and the harmonics aren't showing in the frequency spectrum, but are still clearly visible in the time signal view. However, only when we run both of these sound waves through the Sonus View Pro software can the inspector verify that they have achieved the critical angle of these electrical events. Therefore, it's very important to walk around and listen as you move to try to find the critical angle of the ultrasound anomalies. The key is using your decibels only as an indication of increased signal strength. Decibels, again, should never be used for gauging severity of electrical anomalies. Decibels only indicate that the inspector is in line with the critical angle. This image overlay of both these sound waves, you can clearly see in the top screen, the frequency spectrum shows the critical angle of the sound wave in black and the orange representing the sound wave that was not able to be achieved or achieve the critical angle. 
As we overlay these in a 3D time series, we can see that the amplitude is still present in both time signal analysis, clearly showing that no matter what angle you're at, you are only dependent upon the critical angle for finding the electrical anomaly in a frequency spectrum or FFT view. I thank you for your time today. Spectrograms give the analyst the ability to analyze the signal with three parameters at the same time, time, amplitude, and frequency. The time is on the x-axis and the frequency is on the y, and the amplitude is defined with color. To display the spectrogram, the analyst will need to first select the spectrogram view. This will open a blank screen initially, which requires an additional step of going back to the analysis tab and clicking on compute. The spectrogram analysis screen combines the frequency spectrum, time signal, and spectrogram screen for use in determining harmonic indications. On the right side of the spectrogram analysis screen, we have a frequency spectrum with the frequency going from the bottom to the top and amplitudes going from right to left. When we click anywhere in the spectrogram, the frequency spectrum and the time series below the spectrogram analysis updates. We can also drag the cursor line displayed on the spectrogram to pick up harmonic indications. Spectrogram surface analysis is another variant of the spectrogram analysis, except that in this case, the amplitude parameter is represented with color and height in the surface chart. The spectrogram surface is computed in the same way as the spectrogram. This exciting view gives the analyst a 3D version of the same three axes as the spectrogram analysis, but now shows the amplitude in a vertical height. The view can even be zoomed in or spun around 360 degrees to get a better look at what is occurring with the asset. In this example, we can clearly see where the red spikes of amplitude match up with the burst of energy seen in the full length time signal at the top of the screen and the same burst of energy in the spectrogram below. This view makes for a stunningly compelling report image showing the indications of a fault condition. An orbital XY axis chart can be used for sound analysis of rotating equipment. This is an extension of the time signal domain since it uses the data and plots it on an XY graph. This can show if a rotating asset is out of round or alignment and the positioning of the module needs to be noted for referencing which side of the rotating equipment is out of round or alignment. The XY axis chart even has an overlay feature that can be used to show similar assets against another to clearly see that an issue exists. This can even be applied to electrical assets to help determine if a loose connection or delamination of windings is occurring. Expanding the amount of time viewed in the fields below allows the analyst the ability to go from looking at the entirety of the sound wave to a smaller amount of time. We recommend only using two tenths of a second of time to perform analysis since the harmonic occurrences can be seen repeating several times in this interval. It doesn't matter which software you use, this will still be a good parameter to use for analysis in time signal analysis. If you use the entire length, it's kind of like looking at the Grand Canyon from 30,000 feet, whereas two tenths of a second puts you at 1,000 feet and you can see more of the stratification of the harmonic indications. Expanding the time signal and frequency spectrum view. By simply left clicking on the black line at the top in the full length time signal, you can expand how much time will be displayed in the corresponding frequency spectrum and time signal domains. You can play back the sound wave of only the area you have selected. Simply go up to the top toolbar below options and click on the play segment button. Harmonic markers allow the analyst the ability to find and detect fault conditions in the asset's sound waves. Simply click on the little harmonic marker tab on any of the two views below and start marking your harmonic indications. In the frequency spectrum, the analyst can choose between a maximum, minimum, 
zero crossing, frequency, or freestyle harmonic markings. In time signal, the analyst can also choose the exact same settings as the frequency spectrum, which are maximum, minimum, zero crossing, frequency, and freestyle. To change your harmonic values, simply go to the editing chart access icon located on each of the screens, whether it's the full time signal, the time waveform, or the frequency spectrum. This will open up the edit chart window, which allows the user to customize the X and Y axis or change the views of the screen to 3D and the tools option, which is used to change the values of the harmonic markers value of indication. To set the harmonic marker display value, choose the signal mark cursor. This will then display the two different tab settings that can be used to change the configuration and display of the harmonic marker. Choose the display tab then, change the time to a millionth of a second. This will allow the inspector to pinpoint the exact fault occurrence that is displayed. Once you have set the values you prefer, you will need to save your settings so they will load as your default when you open the software next time. To do this, simply go to the File tab and left click it. The drop down window will open up, then you will scroll down and left click on Save Settings as your own option. Then name the file and save it for future use. Click Save and the process is complete. You can load up to eight sound waves at a time. Any more than that will make it very difficult to delineate which sound wave is which. This allows you to compare historical information of one asset over time or perform comparison analysis on like equipment to see which one might be an outlier. Select Slots feature. This feature allows the analyst to remove overlays of other sound waves to look at one at a time or multiple overlays at the same time. So why should the inspector use sound analysis software similar to the Sonus View Pro? Well, it'll help us see clear patterns that develop when the inspector determines that there are intervals that are occurring. These occurrences can be determined as to what part of a bearing is failing, discharge rate on a steam trap, or what type of electrical failure is occurring. With the report feature, the inspector can submit sound waves and images for their plants or clients to review. Sonus View Pro is the most powerful sound analysis software, allowing you to get out to a millionth of a second and beyond. With higher functionality than this, the Sonus View app, the inspector can diagnose the anomaly more efficiently using the desktop version rather than the field app on a phone. This will also be really useful when it comes to looking for bearing fault conditions, which can be very close together with their fault values. If we take a look at the differences between looking at a tenth of a second of time displayed in the top time signal screen, this represents the maximum capacity of the most sound analysis software platforms on the market today. The bottom time signal screen shows the same sound wave with the same harmonic markers displayed out to a hundredth of a thousandth of a second, similar to what we can do with the Sonus View Pro. Move your cursor over the peak you wish to mark, and then left click. This will drop a harmonic marker on there, giving you the indication of the amplitude value and the value in time or hertz, depending on which screen you're in. You can even go to the 
right of the harmonic marker and choose to either highlight and determine the maximum, which will show you the positive value of amplitude of the peak, or the minimum, which will show you the corresponding negative amplitude of the sound wave. And in the frequency spectrum, you can even choose harmonic value, which will give you a consistent spacing all the way down through the sound wave of the value you first indicate. The analyst can now mark the exact distance between the pattern of the harmonic indications in both time and hertz to determine what the value is between these harmonic indications. This can identify the exact fault condition based off of the harmonic values of these indications. We can then determine everything from electrical fault condition to a bearing fault condition. We can calculate these occurrences in time by dividing one hertz by the harmonic occurrence found in the frequency spectrum to determine what the harmonic occurrence will be in the time signal. In the case of 60 hertz harmonics, the value we would then look for is 0.016 or 0.017 seconds of time. As you see above, we'd have to round up or round down. If the frequency spectrum was showing up with a 120 hertz signature, we would use the same formula and divide one hertz by 120 seconds which would then result in a value of 0.083 to the 12th power harmonic. This same process can be used when it comes to mechanical application for fault detection of stray voltage, outer race, inner race, ball pass, cage faults, for example. We can even get into calculating gear mesh issues inside of gearboxes. So this is an exciting new angle for ultrasound inspectors that we can now use the time waveform or time signal to actually find harmonic indications since our software is capable of going out to a thousandth of a second. If we use this bearing fault calculator and we know the number of balls and turning speed, we can generate the harmonic values not only in hertz, but in cycles per second, which allows us to pick apart these sound waves to see exactly what is occurring. We can then use our calculator to determine the difference in harmonics we are seeing. This leap forward in sound analysis will make it easier for users to see and determine the exact fault condition of their assets. The critical angle of electrical inspection is the angle at which the inspector records the best sound characteristics and decibel level of the anomaly. Sound analysis is critical in the ultrasonic electrical inspection and the decibels can only be used to guide the inspector to the best angle to capture the sound wave. Decibels are only to be used as a reference to find this angle and not a measurement of severity as decibels are not trendable when it comes to electrical inspection applications. The decibel would only indicate that they have found the best angle they can achieve to record the sound wave of the ultrasonic anomaly. Sometimes the incident wave is traveling up and away from the inspector's position and the critical angle cannot be achieved from their position since the inspector is at an obtuse angle to the incident wave. The car radio experience can occur with ultrasound inspection of electrical equipment as well. The inspector can hear an electrical anomaly and record that anomaly for sound analysis, but when they play it back, that analysis of the recording shows that the FS T does not always show a 60 hertz harmonic, but that 60 hertz harmonic marking will show up in time series at 0.016 seconds of the waveform. This observation occurs when the captured sound waves are not at the critical angle. It is not the truest form of the incident wave because there is resolution loss due to distortion of the signal. The inspector will still be able to see some indications within the time signal as it is not dependent on a translation of the time signal into a frequency spectrum, which allows us to see harmonic occurrences. Here you'll see we have an example of where the critical angle was achieved. We see right around the 60 hertz mark, we have our first harmonic indication. We have another one right around 120, another one right around 180, and then we have our fourth one around 240. And then it tapers off once we get to 300. This sound wave was captured at the critical angle. Well, I mentioned a little while ago about how we can actually take that 60 hertz and calculate it into seconds, which would be 0.016 or 0.017 value when we start to look in a time waveform. So let's take a look at that now. 
In the first example, the inspector was able to make the correct diagnosis of ultrasonic emissions by confirming the existence of a 0 0.0167 seconds harmonic in the time signal and a 60 hertz in the FFT. With clear indications in both the time signal analysis and the FFT, the inspector can confirm that they have achieved the critical angle of the ultrasonic emission and determine the existence of treeing or tracking in this case. In this example, the critical angle had not been achieved. This is why there's a lack of rich 60 Hertz harmonics in this occurrence. There's a small indication at 60 Hertz and another one at 120, but then the value quickly disappears. The critical angle had not been achieved in this recording. And as such, we do not have the signal strength to show a rich 60 Hertz harmonic pattern. These indicators all show that this event is treeing or also known as tracking. Even though the inspector was not able to get the critical angle of the incident wave, the time wave signal will still show the occurrence of 0 0.016 seconds, which is the indication of the presence of an electrical anomaly occurring. Since the time signal isn't a translation of this occurrence, there is no loss of the 0 0.016 second indication as the current traveling across the surface is still happening. From there, the inspector will notice that the amplitude in the positive and the negative scaling is pretty even and consistent which is a hallmark trait of treeing or tracking events. Dirty power will produce a distinct buzzing noise with a lot of amplitude when viewed in time waveform. In the US, the harmonics will stack up at one of the following intervals, 121, 121.5, or 122 hertz. The frequency spectrum will show similar harmonics, but in the case of this example, there was too much amplitude in the recording. So the translation of the signal from the time waveform to a frequency spectrum isn't possible due to the distortion of the signal because the inspector had too much volume or sensitivity on their unit to time a recording. We can clearly see, however, the distinct harmonic pattern that shows up in the two tenths of a second time series view that is at the bottom of the screen. With indications of a 121.119 Hertz harmonic in the frequency spectrum, the CBM analyst would be able to determine the existence of dirty power being present. With dirty power occurring between 121 Hertz to 122 Hertz, the analyst can then transition to the time signal to look for the correlation in time intervals. When looking at the sound wave using the time signal screen, the analyst would be looking for a time interval of 0 0.0825 seconds to be occurring for this harmonic interval found in the frequency spectrum. These are just a few examples of the importance of how good data can be mined to determine fault condition not only through decibel trending, but through the analysis of sound waves. This completes our module on how to use the Sonus View Desktop Pro. In this module, we covered the benefits of using Sonus View Pro desktop software. We covered its operational features. We also discussed how to mark harmonic indications. We also talked about how to convert Hertz into seconds. And we gave you a brief introduction into sound analysis. For more training on sound analysis or sound theory, please consider taking our ISO CAT1 ASU course.